Hey there, marketing research students and Excel users. In this video, we're going to talk about summarizing, describing, and displaying data using Excel. In particular, we're going to focus on how to properly generate and report on univariate statistics. In some of the previous videos, we introduced the data file that we use in all of the Excel examples, and we demonstrated some of the da basic data preparation tools we use to get our data ready for analysis. In this particular video, we're going to focus on summarizing and describing data. We're going to be doing some of the most basic but important analysis that we often do with marketing research, univariate statistics. These slides won't cover statistical testing, such as ANOVA or independent sample t-test. We'll get to those a little later. As always, we're using the Craft Beer Excel N23 Summer 470 data set. Link is available. And you probably have it saved on your machine at this point. So the definition of a univariate statistic was covered in your prerequisite statistics courses, so we're not going to spend too much time on the intricate details of each one. And if you need to know exactly what each univariate statistic is, of course, simple Googling or referring to your previous notes will help guide you on that answer. But we'll cover some of the most basic ones as we move along. Broadly speaking, though, univariate statistical analysis is when we're only describing a single variable in our data set at a time, hence uni, univariate. What's sometimes confusing about this is usually when we perform univariate statistical analysis in marketing research, we're doing univariate analysis, but we're doing it on a whole bunch of different variables at once. So we're doing single isolated analysis, but across a variety of variables. This is where we usually start before we do any more fancy or elaborate analysis in our marketing data set. We start here with the basics, univariate analysis. Um, in fact, in many cases, the phrase univariate statistics is entirely synonymous with the phrase summary statistics. If we're going to engage in univariate analysis and use Excel to do so, the skills that we're always going to need to have available to us are, we need to identify the correct summary statistics or univariate statistics that we want to report on for a given variable. We need to be able to calculate them using Excel. And we need to report those statistics accurately and professionally. One of the biggest challenges that people usually face when they're new to marketing research analysis is what should they report in terms of univariate statistics? Well, this list here covers most of the most common summary statistics that we're interested in reporting. It's not completely exhaustive, but these terms should be familiar to you. But we don't always want to report all of them for any given variable. Instead, we need to understand whether the variable that we're interested in reporting upon is something that we're going to report on at the nominal ordinal, interval, or ratio level. So again, measurement level becomes a very important issue as part of our analysis. This is our starting checklist. There's all kinds of exceptions and caveats to this, but if you're capable of identifying if you want to report upon a variable at a certain measurement level, this list tells you what you should never report, what you should always report, and of course, a little tricky here, we have to use some expertise and use some judgment is what you should usually, sometimes, or it depends, report upon. We'll talk about that as we move through the tutorial. This little cheat sheet is a great starting point, though. Uh, it's available to you through some links, so check that out in your course content. To illustrate the relevance of the little cheat sheet that I just showed you, let's imagine uh, this question from our craft beer survey data set. This was a series of actually five different questions, all related to someone's familiarity or lack of familiarity with a particular brewery. Now, each one of these individual questions was measured at the nominal level, right? Familiar, not familiar, simple binary nominal level data. Because it's at nominal level uh, data, when we want to report on each one of these variables, the only choice we have available to us is to report it as a nominal level variable. Now, as a different example, Look at these two questions. These are our Likert scale agreement questions related to subjective knowledge about craft beer. Now, when we think about which summary statistics we might want to report related to these two measures, we have to make a decision. Is our goal in our reporting to report the average value for each of these two questions? Or is our focus to report on the two box score and analyze the two box scores? If we're interested in reporting the average, that means we're treating this variable in the original scale format that it came in, that is interval level data. 
Whereas if we are treating this as a two box score to be analyzed, that means we're going to aggregate and group this data before we do our analysis and reporting. And if we group it that way, it'll be nominal level data that we're reporting upon. This is what I mean by, and this has been a recurring theme as we move through our analysis, you have to both be able to identify how a variable was originally measured in the way that you want to report it. That guides you and helps you understand how to actually properly report the correct statistical values. Now we're going to illustrate quite a few of these examples in the next uh, part of the video here. But of course, if we're going to try to endeavor to report these different summary statistics, that would imply in Excel, we need to be aware of the common functions that we use to derive these statistical values. And again, uh, they're briefly reported here. We're gonna show some of these in action by way of using Excel. But uh, this little cheat sheet here is available to you to show you where all the functions that we might wanna use are aggregated. And as always, uh, Basic Excel functions are always easy to Google or YouTube for additional help if you want some resources beyond what we cover in this tutorial.